from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020. Of course, this year's event happening digitally, so we're talking to Red Hat executives, partners, customers where they are around the globe, bringing them remotely into this digital event. And really important topic, of course, has been automation for a long time. I think back to my career, automation is something we've been talking about for decades, but even more important in today's age. Uh, happy to welcome back to the program, Tim Kramer uh, with Red Hat, uh, Vice President of Engineering is the title we have uh, listed to you here. But since we last talked, uh, Tim, at Ansible Fest, uh, there's been a little uh, expansion in the scope of what you're working on. So first of all, welcome back and tell us uh, what's new in your world. All right, well, thanks a lot. So yeah, there's been a, a rather substantial change in roles. So I'm now in charge actually of all of the engineering within Red Hat, um, all the development engineering. So that includes the middleware teams, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, um, uh, course management and automation and the the newly uh, the new team that we just brought over from IBM doing advanced container management. So I'm I'm basically running the whole thing now and OpenShift of course. <laughs> Excellent. Well you know just a few things to keep you busy Tim. Uh, congratulations on that and love your sport in the uh, the Boston uh, Hello World uh, uh, Rel 8 shirt uh, that of course we saw last year at Summit. Um, I, I know one of the things being uh, digital is people do miss, uh, you know, so, so some of the t-shirts. Um, I, I know my family was quite fond of the May the 4th Be With You shirts that Red Hat did one year at Summit, of course, celebrating Star Wars Day, uh, highly celebrated in, in, in the Miniman household. Uh, but, uh, you know, Tim, let, let's talk about Ansible. So just br bring our audience up to speed, uh, you know, what's happening, some, some of the latest pieces. Uh, and, and of course, it's been one of the great success stories. Uh, you know, Ansible was a lot of adoption before the acquisition, but you know, really accelerated over the last few years. Yeah, so at Ansible Fest, uh, we talked a lot about technology to come and showed a few demos of the possibilities. What we have done since then is actually bring all of that technology to life and to expand it. One thing that Red Hat has really done is continue to invest heavily in uh, in Ansible to make sure that we can we can bring new capabilities and new value to the subscription for everyone. So some of the things that have been happening since Summit, which of course we are, and, and since Ansible Fest, uh, since we last talked, was that the, the community continues to scale at a really rapid rate. It's almost hard to keep up, and the number of modules that we have had has grown just tremendously. So we have well over. 3,000 modules now that are available. And as customers and partners and, and also um, just casual users are looking through that, it's difficult to figure out what's really supported, what's really rock solid, what can I count on, and what is, you know, maybe sort of that Wild West community, I'm just trying out some stuff with Ansible and see how it goes. So what we've been focusing on a lot is a place that you can come to the Ansible Automation Platform and the Hub, where you can now get this content and you can rely on the fact that it's going to be certified by partners, tested by partners. They're always keeping up with the latest updates. A great example of this is, let's just take NetApp or F5 or Cisco as good examples across the various spaces. Um, we absolutely in the Ansible engineering team are not experts on all of the latest changes, the new hardware coming out, the new uh, software upgrades that they're making. And our ability to keep up with that is, is pretty difficult, right? We, we just can't do it, but they sure can. And their customers and our customers are both demanding that we give them more content, better content, and we need to be able to do it at the rate that our partners want to be able to provide that kind. So as an example, normally we were, we were kind of slowing Ansible down and trying to do one release every six months. But if a new piece of you know, software, a new switch or a new uh, disk array or anything comes out in the meantime, all of our customers had to wait 
for that next six month release. That was not very convenient. Um, and having an expectation that our partners were gonna line up on our schedule was, well, uh, you know, that, that didn't work out so well for them. So we've, we've created this certified content and we now have the, the goals to have 50 certified partners. Back at Fest, we, I think we had three or four. Uh, we're now up to 30. Our goal is to hit 50. Um, we had about 100 modules that we showed at Fest that were certified. We now have over 1,200 modules that are certified content. And these are our partners creating this content and, and making it stable and secure uh, you know, for everyone to use. So that, yeah, I think, it, by far, that was the coolest thing that we've done. Yeah, it, it, it's great to see that progress. Congratulations on, on the momentum uh, since uh, Ansible Fest. Um, one of the other things uh, talked about uh, back, back at that show, uh, we talked about how analytics and automation, you know, how those are going together. Uh, so, you know, how's adoption been, uh, you know, since last we met? Yeah, so adoption on the analytics side has been, um, has been taking off. It was pretty nascent. So, I mean, I could tell you that, that we've grown by about, 5x there, <laughs> but we started a little bit small. So we had a few customers that signed up early on to do it. I think probably the more impressive thing is that we have a couple of customers in markets that you would traditionally think we're not going to get their data. Um, they're, they're more concerned about what we're sharing, but we have a major bank, we have um, a, a major manufacturer that have well over 10,000 systems. Uh, providing data back into Red Hat that allows us then to analyze and provide a bunch of analytics back um, um, on their running estate. And I think that that's amazing, right? Seeing the big customers that are coming in from markets that you might think, you know, we're probably not gonna get a lot of uptake uh, has been really exciting to me. All right, so you, you talked a bit about how Ansible fits into the ecosystem. Of course, being at Summit, want to understand a bit more how Ansible, the latest of how it's fitting into the rest of the Red Hat portfolio. So, you know, I've got interviews with Stephanie Shearis talking about Rel and Joe Fitzgerald uh, talking about ACM. Uh, your group, I know, is heavily involved working on a lot of those pieces. So help us understand uh, how this is kind of a seamless portfolio. Yeah, that I think that's one of the most important things that we do uh, within the Red Hat team is that we have to share this efficiency across all of the product groups, um, make them better and provide additional enhanced value there. We've done a lot on the RHEL side. Uh, probably one of the maybe lesser known thing is that we've, we've been working really closely on OpenShift. And actually we have a lot of customers now that are uh, that really want the Ansible Automation Hub available on OpenShift as a first class um, application. So we're doing things, we're writing operators for those so that we can automate the updates and upgrades and, and backup and all of that uh, important functionality so that it's really easy then to manage your Ansible Automation uh, Hub running on OpenShift. So that's one big thing. And then we're going to integrate that really well into the advanced container management that the team from uh, IBM that came over uh, is is working towards. So uh, a really close partnership with ACM team to make sure that we can start to not only gather lists of affected systems, but then take that list and do a bunch of automations against it. So that's right. one. I, on the RHEL side, um, we've done a lot. So we introduced at last summit RHEL 8, and we talked about having insights as part of that. Since then, we've been adding more and more capabilities into insights um, to enhance that value of the subscription of RHEL. So we're looking at, we looked at adding in, uh, well, advisor is now what we used to call insights. It's just something that advises you about problems or issues that may be occurring in your, your RHEL instances that are running on-prem. We've also added in a, a drift service so you can tell if your configurations are sort of drifting apart. We've added in a compliance checker. So you can define some kind of a policy or compliance that you want to, uh, you want to enforce on all of your, your running instances and we make sure that you're still compliant. 
Uh, we also have a vulnerability detector, which you'd kind of expect. So any uh, nasty security issues that come along, you know, we can pop those up and show you right away. And probably some of the, one of the newer things is we allow you to do patching. And you can do that patching right from cloud.redhat.com. Uh, we also have another new, very exciting feature, which is subscription watch, also on cloud.redhat.com. And what this allows you to do is to see and manage all of your subscriptions across your entire hybrid estate. So from what you're running on-prem to what you're running in any of the public clouds, uh, we can actually track that for you. You can see what kind of usage you have and, um, and then you know, make you know, better economic decisions for yourself um, and then be able to easily expand that usage if you want to. It used to be a little bit more difficult to do that. So we're trying to make the subscriptions just like as much in the background as possible to make it easier for our customers to make. Yeah, so to Tim, one of, one of the big changes customers have to go through is moving from uh, you know, their environment and their data centers to the leverage of SaaS and managing things that are outside of their control in the public cloud. You know, you've got an engineering development team and you've got software that went from, you know, mostly going in customers data centers too you've got SaaS offerings you're living in the public cloud so you know what what want to understand you know what's changing in your world what advice would you give to other people as to kind of the learnings that red hat has had uh going through those pieces it's it's actually kind of a a neat story because after we after we changed to start um making a lot of our services uh that we had just only shipping and products on prem into cloud-based services, uh, we had to develop this platform to be able to host all of these services. We started with the Insights platform because we already had that running um, out in the public cloud. So that was the obvious first thing to, to base everything on. Um, but we had to build out that platform so that it could support all these services. The ones I just talked about that are with RHEL are really good examples. So between you know, a policy, a compliance, drift, all of these different kinds of services that we're offering, we had to build out that set of capabilities and services in, in what we're calling sort of the, the cloud.redhat.com platform. What I'm seeing is that a lot of customers are going through some of these same kinds of thoughts, right? Like they have a myriad, let's say, of applications that are running that they're trying to provide back into their, their own uh, company, right? So different divisions of a company. Uh, they have things that are running in the cloud, some things that are running on-prem, uh, and they want to start to be able to offer a more cohesive set of services, consolidate some of this, share some of the engineering effort that they have across their various teams. This is exactly the journey that we went through to get to cloud.redhat.com. I'm finding a surprising number of customers that are actually really interested just in that story about how we did that. One of the things that um, we've found is we've been working with the folks at the Open Innovation Labs within Red Hat, and this is one of the transformation stories that they see constantly as well. So we've, we've worked with them and shared this. They're a great resource to help customers kind of think through that problem and get them into uh, a new kind of a platform. But it's been quite a journey, right? I mean, we've been really focused on the infrastructure and on-prem so moving to the cloud was uh, a big deal, but I'll tell you, engineering can move so much faster in a SaaS service than it can with on-prem software delivery. It's, uh, it's been remarkable how quickly we could get there. Yeah, uh, Tim, one other thing, if, if I look at you know, Red Hat, you're a global company. Uh, most development organizations are highly distributed uh, to begin with. Uh, so many companies today are now having to rapidly figure out, you know, how do I manage, people that are working from home, how do I uh, live in these environments? You know, from an automation tooling, you know, would love to hear uh, any advice you have there, as well as just anything else uh, from, you know, your engineering experience and your teams that uh, other people might be able to learn from uh, as they're dealing with uh, today's landscape. Well, I mean, to be honest, right, this is a, we've never seen anything like this um, in our history. Uh, with with this kind of pandemic that's happening worldwide, so it's shifting everything about business, and it is a uh, it has been challenging just within Red Hat Engineering for how we can 
manage the engineers and their expectations and how difficult it can be to work from home. Um, I have amazing stories from my own engineers. Uh, I had an engineer who's in Spain and his wife is a nurse. She got, she's on like 18 hour shifts. The hospital comes back. They have to separate. He's got the kids. Um, and, and because they don't want them to get infected, it's a really, really difficult working situation for a lot of families out there um, to try to make it through this. So one of the things at Red Hat, right, is, is we just have to recognize that it's okay to slow things down a little bit, let our engineers uh, not feel the pressure that they have to do both childcare and school at home and caring for sick relatives or sick family. Um, as well as meet all of your deadlines, uh, it's it's kind of too much. So we've been really, uh, we're trying to be very compassionate with with our, our folks, letting them know that we have their back and it's gonna be okay uh, as, as we try to get ourselves through this, this ridiculously uh, different time that we, I mean, we've never seen anything like this, like I said. From, a, from an engineering perspective, I think work from home has been you know, it's okay for some people. If you have a, a larger home, I think it's a little easier maybe to find a room that you can go into and, and do your work. Uh, for some though, you know, if they're in an apartment or you're sharing with a bunch of friends, um, it's not your workplace. And it can be really challenging to, to figure out how to work for eight hours a day with sort of a lot of distractions or just feeling confined and and, you know, it, it just being really difficult for anybody that wants to try to get out. You go a little stir crazy, right? So um, the good thing, I guess, is that that uh, engineering is naturally lends itself to being able to, to be remote and work from home. So we have a we have an advantage that way than other industries, which is great. But it is uh, it's definitely been uh, really challenging for our teams to be able to cope. Uh, with this, and and uh, all we can do is just be really understanding. All right. Well, Tim, uh, appreciate the stories there. Definitely, everyone's working through some challenging times. Uh, Want to give you the final word as to uh, really takeaways as to what what should people be watching, uh, what things should people be uh, going back and looking at uh, fr from an automation standpoint as they leave Red Hat Summit 2020. Well, we're just going to continue to work with the community, work with our partners, get more certified content, and continue to scale the best way that we can for all of our users and our customers. That is the key focus. Uh, we want to continue automating and providing all of that flexibility. If you want all 4,000 modules and a big download, we certainly are we're going to continue to give you that option. But if you want to be able to start uh, customizing what you download, maybe only relying on certified content instead of community content, we're going to give you that option now as well so that you, you know what you're running. And with the analytics, we're just scratching the surface here. It's, we're getting some great data. Um, it's helping us to develop new ways of insights into how your uh, systems are running. And that'll get very exciting as we go forward. I know that we've seen like 4x increase already in the amount of insights attached to RHEL, which is really, which is really great. Um, and we're now at least in the hundreds of customers that are using the AI. I think as we show more value there, um, we will get a lot more customers uh, to, to provide some of their data, which will allow us then collectively to come up with some really great analytics to help people become more efficient with their automation. Well, Tim Kramer, thank you so much for the update and uh, thank, thank you to uh, everything your team's doing. And just a, a reminder to the audience, of course, you know, these communities not only are important technical resources, but many of them you've made friends with over the years. So if you need help, you know, reach out to the community. There are so many good stories that can be found uh, amongst these communities, helping each other through these challenging times. So lots more coverage from Red Hat Summit 2020. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you as always for watching theCUBE.